Hey guys, it's Vivian. How are you doing? So today I'm going to review that One Piece anime episode 779. And this week's episode took about an eighth of a chapter, but it also looks like we're going to get a filler next week. We also got some really funny and informative parts again, along with some good news, and we made someone very, very mad. Anyways, let's go, guys. Now that we're done with the preliminaries of the reverie, we go to the title and it just sounds so scary because it makes Kaido sound like a beast even though we're not even going to fight him yet. And before we learn about the events of Baltigo, Chef Luffy has some cooking to do except he doesn't know how to cook. The very least Nami could do is supervise him or at least put someone to babysit Luffy in the kitchen. So Luffy just goes ahead and chops everything up and I really hope those are not pieces of wood that he's cutting up. And I guess Nami has to navigate. Brooks showing Karen around and Chopper is just tending to Peckham's wounds. They have some small talk on how crazy Luffy is, but before they can finish, Pedro jumps down and calls for everyone over. Pedro shows Luffy the newspaper since he believes Luffy is worried about his dad, but nope, Luffy just brushes his pops aside and looks for Sabo, his Oni-chan, and the Straw Hats are all amazed by Luffy's brotherhood. Well, this is Luffy's first time seeing his dad's picture, so it's no wonder he has a late reaction. We also get a small flashback of Grandpa Garp telling Luffy about his dad, Dragon the Revolutionary, but Luffy is pretty surprised as he just realized who his dad is. Luffy looks and acts more like his Gramps, but I remember Ivankov said he had a similar feel to Dragon, so I hope that we get to see more similarities between the two in the future. It's also kind of sad that Sabo spent more time with Dragon than Luffy did, but I can't wait till the day they all meet up. And the whole time, Carrot is doing her Garuchu thing. At first, her skinship with Luffy was cute, but the biting and stress Catching his hair was a bit weird, maybe a bit kinky. <laughs> I actually checked in the manga and she actually did bite his ears, but not to the extent of the anime. Since Luffy never had a real bonding relationship with his dad, I guess he doesn't really care or mind. Even Robin spent more time with Dragon. Anyways, they continue to read the newspaper while Chopper notices some kind of smell in the back. And it says that Blackbeard pirates go to the location and destroyed the place before Cyper Pole and the Marines even arrived. And when Nami questions why Blackbeard wanted to to go after the revolutionary army, Luffy remembers that Sabo beat up Burgess and I guess he does remember because he did it in the name of brotherhood. <laughs> if you look at the background, it's hilarious how much and how many times Chopper is trying to get their attention. And finally, Pedro takes Carrot to stop biting Luffy. My goodness, if she wasn't that cute, I'd be so annoyed, but I'll let it pass. And Pedro just states that the Blackbeard pirates briefly clashed with the cyber pole before getting away and he makes a good point that if any leaders were captured, it would totally be in the headlines. And the whole time, Chopper is still trying to get their attention to little avail as Carrot continues to bite Pedro's arms. <laughs> Finally, Chopper is able to get the attention of Luffy, who is slightly annoyed by it. And I totally cracked up when Chopper pointed to the burning kitchen. The animation of Luffy's face was totally like another being. And what the hell is this abomination Luffy created? It's so creepy and wasteful. And he just realized he forgot to turn off the stove. And how did he cook it and why didn't anyone realize the fire from the smell, heat, and the flames? Even the sunny go was embarrassed and shocked. Anyways, lucky or not, a storm comes and Kara thinks the lightning is Electro. I think she's never seen a big storm on Zoe. Her first adventure is going down from here on out. But at least they don't have to worry about the fire since the storm is going to take out the flames and Nami takes charge of everything. First, she disciplines the Luffy and then she orders for the sails to be furled and for Brooke to get the cola ready. The the filler parts were okay and the animation is going well. Luffy is excited and he notices how quick Pedro is and he goes to help Chopper. So Brooke goes to get that cola but the ship is rocking and you see him falling back and forth along with Peckums and Carrot and they totally could have made this filler part really long but I'm glad they kept it short. And Nami goes and yells at Peckums for not helping out but he's like, I'm half dead woman. Meanwhile, we return to Zoe and this part answers my questions from the previous episodes. Wanda inquires requires Barietti why he didn't tell them about Carrot sooner, but we know why. She bribed him with some bananas and that face she made though, right? <laughs> Lol. And Barietti makes it really obvious with the faces and eye motioning to the bananas, but Wanda's just worried about Carrot and she's glad that she'll be safe with Luffy and friends. And him eating that banana is just so cute. Why are these minks so adorable? I talk about them every episode, I can't get enough, and I just hope Carrot stays with us 
for a much longer time. Anyways, Wanda tells the Duke to rest up, but he brings up a really scary and important question of how the enemy got their hands on a Vivido card and hopefully it is lost. It just makes me wonder if there's a betrayer among them or did someone die protecting their Vivido card and they got it stolen from Jack or something? Yeah, so they have to be really wary in case the enemy returns. So, we go out into the open sea and then we go down with the fishes and then it just starts building up to something mysterious and somewhat dangerous and we see broken parts of the fleet of ships and it looks like it's Jack's ship and among them we see a figure and it turns out to be Jack. He's still alive and despite being a devil fruit user, we see his sharp teeth indicating he might be a fishman and he's just really hungry for revenge and he's wanting someone to pull him up. Okay, now we reach the climatic part of this episode. We go to a certain country and we see a pirate running to his boss Kaido to confirm the news that Jack wasn't able to rescue Joker. Thus, there won't be any more smiles for Kaido to create an all devil fruit pirate crew. Suddenly, Kaido breaks down and starts crying like a big baby and his underlings comment that he's become a sentimental drunk and all of his tears and snot fall all over the place including over his subordinates and he laments that Joker was too weak and he's feeling sorry for the guy for being taken down while his underlings make the wrong mistake of acknowledging Luffy's existence. So Kaido makes them hold up Law and Luffy's bounty before he gets ready. The other guys see what he's gonna do and they get the hell out of there before Kaido swings the two out to the far reaches of the sea, he is now a raging drunk and he's so pissed off at Law and Luffy stating that their generation is too overly confident and they pissed him off for messing up his business and he's gonna show them who is the boss. He tells someone in a jail cell to warn their generation to run away from him cause he ain't playing no games. It pans up to a beat up Captain Eustace Kid. If you remember, Kid, Hawkins, and Apu were in an alliance to take down Shanks so I'm looking forward to the day when Luffy and friends come to Wano and hopefully we have another alliance to take on Kaido although Luffy ain't down to take down Shanks so you better watch out kid but seriously kid is no pushover he was beaten this badly look at the blood he ain't even moving I mean I know he's faced against Kaido who's very emotional he's suicidal depressed abusive bipolar and all of those psychological disorders but seriously Kaido is a freaking beast jumping off Sky Island he wants to die but he can't so how in the world does Shanks hold him back during marine ford i can't even fathom finally we return to the thousand sunny go and we see that snow is falling and they seem to have fixed the burning kitchen roof it's time to eat and before we even see the food the different aromas give off a misleading colorful look and chopper carrot and brooke are ready to dig in although they don't know what they're in for then we zoom into a disgusting and deadly looking purple curry with what looks like fish bones and some mushrooms and some other weird stuff in there there's also uncooked rice as said by Nami and we find out purple is from the jam and there's some kind of blue jelly mixed in as noted by Pedro usually anime people who can't cook is just kind of ridiculous and over exaggerated but Luffy actually made something that could just kill you and just I don't know all these crazy stuff in there poor everyone especially Peckums he's already injured and yeah they don't deserve any of this <laughs> Luffy is disappointed and pissed at everyone's remarks and after trying it himself he finds that it's just as horrible as they all said you can also see that Luffy used a huge pot to cook everything in and Brooke notes that Sanji would be so pissed off and mad at how much food is wasted this leads to Nami checking on their supplies and she realized that all of their provisions are gone and Luffy replies that he messed up a whole lot of time so he used up a whole week worth of food oh my god what did he do how are they gonna survive now and so we go on to the preview and it looks like a filler because we see luffy and friends trying to get food from a marine base and they're all disguised in a navy attire and have some new hairdos <laughs> there's a really interesting one and i think luffy's in a mohawk or something but it looks kind of interesting i'm uh, i'll check it out but i don't know if i'm gonna review it but it looks fun until next time guys peace out. Thanks.